Hallelujah. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, There went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. When she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with pitch, put the child therein, she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Her maidens walked along by the river's side, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. When she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. <clears throat> you can be seated. As a child cries out to their parents, that child has the expectation that their need will be met. Their cry will be heard. Their cry will be responded to. When a child cries out, they are expressing an immediate desire uh, that they have a need that is met. The simple declaration of a child when it cries out, stating that they cannot do what is needed. They need the help of their parent to intervene on their behalf. That child, they learn to cry out in a specific way with specific tones and uh, ways to obtain food or to be taken care of when they are hurt. They know how to cry to get a hold of their parent. They're confident and they are adamant that their need will be met when they cry out. They do not wait for the convenient time. They are not concerned at all about how they sound or who they bother or who they interrupt. They, they're not concerned about that. They're not concerned about who is around them when they cry out because they have a need. They simply have that need and that need has to be met at that moment in time. After a while, it takes a little long, if it takes a little longer to get their need met, they don't let up. They don't stop crying out. They don't pause. They, they do, the cry does not get weaker. They begin to travail when necessary. That child begins to get louder if necessary. The cry from their belly, it screams out for their need to be met, and they demand and they expect and believe for an answer. Somewhere along the way, the kid the, the, grows up a little bit and they learn that some things they're going to have to do on their own. They learn to get their own food. They, they learn the process when they are hurt and what to do to take care of things when they need to be taken care of. They, they learn some things in life that, are, that is harder to deal with and some things are easier to deal with and some things are stressful to deal with. But you look at life, and, and many things in life you, you require discipline, require effort, require hard work and commitment. When somebody buys a house, they, they, they often have a mortgage on that house, some 10, 20, 30 years long. No matter what, what it takes, no matter how expensive, no matter how many grueling hours of work and dedication and sacrifice is required, they, they find it within themselves to commit to paying that bill every single month. They go without at times. They, they sacrifice, sacrifice things that they want and sacrifice things that they don't want to give up at times because it requires sacrifice to, to take care of that. When someone they commit a lifestyle, uh, want to commit to a lifestyle of fitness and healthy living requires them to go in the gym for multiple hours a week, committing to exercise, co committing to physical labor, physical pain at times, committing to paying a certain amount of money for sometimes to get the right food, going through self-denial, not always getting what they want in the moment. Education in the school system, it requires at least 12 years of schooling through high school. 12 long years of trying and spending time and sacrificing schedules. More if further education is pursued. With that time in that school system, dedication is required. Many light, late nights of studying and stressing about getting things done, getting things completed, sacrifice of time is, is given. There's navigating relationships and, and schedules and learning how to interact with people. Giving up of self at times. The commitment to a certain standard of quality of work for every single assignment. For at least 12 years, this requires saying no to a lot of things. 
Yet for many, it's not looked at in those terms. They're just things that we do. These are expectations that we have. These are things that are expected that we just do them, oftentimes without even questioning why. Well, those are good things, and I'm thankful for those things. And, but you look at someone when they work a job, they go to that job every day at the same time. They get their work done each and every day. When the boss says go, they go. When the boss says they are changing things up a little bit, they make changes and they go along with those changes when that boss says, I need something to change. There are things that we are trained to do in society, things that we are expected to do in culture around us. Sometimes through difficulty and hardship, sometimes through late payments and assignments, and there's consequences when we don't do those things in the natural. We are taught when we don't pay a bill on time, there's, there's a consequence. We're taught that when we don't put an assignment in on time or we're late to work, there's a consequence. There's a natural consequence for those things. We are taught that when we don't do very well on a test, there's a consequence. In the Galatians, it tells us, Galatians 6, 7 through 9, be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. These are some of those natural consequences. In the spiritual, there are consequences too. By the grace and mercy, patience, long-suffering, and love of God, we don't always feel that sting of those consequences spiritually. We don't always notice the consequences of spiritual neglect. At least not initially. We don't, we don't see it all the time. Many times when spiritual disciplines and commitments falter just a little bit, and when they go down just a little bit, and when there's just a little bit of time of neglect, they can be explained away in the natural it was just a bad day today. Today was incredibly stressful. I've been dealing with a lot of frustration and anger lately. I've been secure about my life lately. I keep having anxiety. I can't sleep at night. I can't get along with my spouse or my family. I've just been struggling with my face. My emotions have been all out of whack. I can't seem to get anything done right. These things we can think that we can explain them in the natural, but they are natural results of spiritual neglect. They are physical expressions of a need that has to be met in the spiritual. I can't seem to get my prayer life on track. I, I've tried, but I cannot overcome what I'm dealing with. I'm sad all the time. I'm depressed all the time. I'm discouraged all the time. I'm just so tired all of the time. Too often we just simply utilize the wrong tools to respond to the things that we face. In 2 Corinthians, the Bible tells us, For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They cast down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There are times when our spiritual disciplines and our spiritual and kingdom activity is neglected or put on the back burner for a couple of days or put on the back burner because we're worn out and we're tired and we don't recognize it. But how can we recognize it when those things and those issues, those struggles are natural byproducts from the spiritual neglect if we're not in tune with spiritual things? 2 Corinthians 2.14 tells us the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. So when we are carnal, when we are not in tune with the Spirit, when we are not actively pursuing the Spirit of God and being led of the Spirit of God, they become foolishness unto us. We can't know what they are because they are spiritually discerned. They are discerned by the spiritual man, by, by interacting with the Spirit of God, having our heart and mind available and our schedules available for the Spirit of God. So for us to have an understanding and a discerning of what is happening in the Spirit and what is happening in our home and what is happening throughout our day and the feelings that we have, we must be looking through spiritual eyes. We must be looking and using spiritual resources. When there's a struggle in the natural, when there's a struggle that is persistent and returns in the natural, it must be dealt with in the spiritual. It is the evidence of a need to spiritually engage. It is the evidence of a need to put things in order spiritually. 
It is the evidence that something needs to be aligned spiritually. When we battle in the natural, that is our evidence. That is our guarantee that there is a battle going on spiritually. There is a battle that is fighting in that area of the natural struggle that needs to be fought, that needs to be engaged with, that needs to be battled with in the spirit. This is one of the Lord's ways of getting our attention. Knock, knock, hey, come back to me. Knock, knock, son, ask me for direction when you need it. Knock, knock, daughter, the strength that you need comes from me. Knock, knock, I created you. I made you in my image. I know what is best for you. I know what you need. I know how to put things where they need to be. And all it takes for you is to call out to me. Knock, knock, I know how to deal with what mess that you are in. Knock, knock, I know how to bring peace to your chaos. I know how to bring peace to your storm. But can I tell you unashamedly that I still desperately need my Father every day. I still desperately need my Father to help me get things done right. I need my Father to teach me how to follow Him. Teach me how to follow His Word because I cannot do it without Him. I cannot do it without Him. I cannot understand what I need to understand without my Father. I am speaking of our Heavenly Father who is perfect, who has never sinned, who has never lied or manipulated any one of His children. He has never failed. He has never taken advantage of you. And he has never been a false representation of what he is not. There are times that we need to be reminded that I am a child of God. You are a child of God and it does not matter who is around you. It does not matter what your need is or how badly you missed that mark. You can take it up with your father. I need, to sh- I need him to show me how to be a good husband each day. I need him to show me how to be a good father every day. See, don't let travailing be absent from your prayers. A child's travail is powerful. A child's travail breaks through things that are impossible to break through. The Bible compares travailing in the spirit and travailing in prayer to a woman in labor. Painful in the moment, painful in in the time that it is happening, but joy, that comes when it is brought forth and no longer they will remember the pain. No longer they will remember the discomfort or the sorrow. Travailing communicates our passion, our desire, our care, our love for something to be changed, for something to be moved. Travailing, it is not easy. It is work, but it is necessary. Some, uh, some synonyms that we find for travailing, to twist, to whirl about, dance, rise, fear, tremble, be in anguish, be pained. To writhe or tra- in travail with, bear, bring forth, wait anxiously, be distressed, to grind, to work, to labor, to toil. Travail, it comes from the gut. Travail comes from the belly when nothing else works and something has to be done. No matter what it is, something has to be coming out of our belly to scream forth in travail for God to move on our behalf. This, this travailing thing, it's a pursuit. It's not just a dream. It's not just a nice idea. It is a necessity for a child of God to travail. It is a necessity for a child of God to be familiar, of a, in a, to, be familiar to a place of godly sorrow, calling out to their father. It has to be a necessity for a child of God to know what it feels like to put their heart on the altar and not let it up until something changes. It has to be familiar for a child of God to be able to travail and not worry about how it feels for a while because something is more important than that moment. Child of God, it has to be something where we know how to travail. Let's lift our hands for a moment, call out to our Father. Jesus, you are good. We praise your name, God. We pray that you would do what you want to do in this place, Lord God. Move in our hearts, move in our minds, Lord God. We call out to you, God, trusting you, Jesus. We believe you, Lord God, in every promises. God, you are good. God, we trust you. We give our hearts, our minds to you, Lord God. Whatever you ask of us, Lord God, we reach out and we accept it, Lord God. We pursue after you, Lord God. We pursue after you, Jesus. We have to know what it is to travail. 
We have to know that it's appropriate to travail for an answer, for direction, and for things to happen. It is appropriate to travail and call out to God and sometimes wail out to God. But the reality is sometimes there's a struggle. Maybe you struggle to expect an answer from your father because you were afraid that you were an orphan. Maybe you struggle to expect an answer from God because you might be afraid that God left you in the mess that he found you in. That he really didn't adopt you or that you have been exiled for some reason from the family of God because of things and failures that have been done. That's a lie. God has never left you. God has never forsaken you. God has never lied to you and he only desires good for you. You have to to expect an answer when you go to your father. You have to expect an answer when you call out to him. In Deuteronomy 31.6, we're told, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of thee, for the Lord that God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee or forsake thee. A child travails for their needs. A child ensures to express exactly how important it is to them for their need to be met. A child of God travails. Yes, travail for the lost. We hear it often. Travail for the lost. Travail in the spirit when there is a great immediate need. But there cannot be the only time that we find a place of travail. Travail for your own personal walk with God. Travail for the things of your, of your desires of your heart that you want to see in your walk with God. Travail for the things that you want to see birth in your walk with God. There's got to be something inside of you that learns and knows how to war in the spirit. There's got to be something inside of us that has a militant mindset of pursuit of what we need from our Father. We have to understand and pursue, I will not lose this battle over my mind. That comes through travail. I will not lose this battle over my home. I will not be overcome by that temptation or that addiction or that difficulty. The militant mindset has to say, I will overcome. I will have victory in every battle that I fight. I will die to self and follow the Spirit as it leads. I will grow in my relationship relationship with the Lord for my father loves me for my father loves me when travailing becomes a part of your prayer life you're gonna win you're gonna have victory you are going to prevail you are gonna find a perfect love you will be able to share that perfect love in a way that you never thought possible because our father loves us It's worth travailing for whatever that need is whatever that worry is it's worth travailing for Anything worthwhile, it's worth travailing for. It's worth using your voice and losing it. It's worth giving your belly and your heart to God until it hurts. Because there are things that have to be done in the spirit. There are things that have to be accomplished in the spirit. No amount of talking will do it. No amount of conversation will do it. No amount of education will do it. There are some things that have to be accomplished in the spiritual Anything that is worthwhile is worth praying into existence. Anything worthwhile is worth praying into your spirit. It's worth laboring in prayer. And the fact is that there are some things that will not be birthed in your spirit if it is not through travail. There are some things that, will, that need to be birthed in our homes that will not be birthed in any other place than travail. Our homes, they are worth travailing for. Our children and their desire for godly things, they are worth travailing for. You don't travail just when things are bad. You are travailing for their future. You are travailing for their future ministry, for their peace, for their love, for their protection and guidance as they go. It is not something to do where we just travail when things are bad. We travail because we trust our Father and He goes before us. We travail because there are things yet to be done that we want to see done, but they have to be pushed through the Spirit. The people that you know and the people that you do not know, they are worth travailing for. We have to get to the point where we travail before the cancer hits. We have to get to the point where we travail before depression destroys the mind and destroys the marriage and destroys the home. The travail has to come before that. The travail should be of good things and not only of bad things. The travail has to be something where we are travailing for the ministry of God, the calling of God to be birthed in every soul. 
Every single soul. You don't have to wait for altar calls. You don't have to wait for an anointed worship set. You don't have to wait for someone to give you permission because your Father has given you permission. Your Father has given you the privilege. Your Father has given you the ability to choose to travail. Someone cry out to God. Someone call on God because He is giving us permission to call out to Him. Who's going to travail for your marriage if not you? Who's going to travail for your family, for your home if not you? Who will travail for Kemp Avenue and the other businesses around this area if not you? Who will travail for the businesses in this area, the homes, the neighborhoods if not you? Who will travail for your calling in your ministry, your children's ministry if not you? Who will travail today? Who will travail today? We have to be able to lift our voice unashamedly and call out to our Father. And not be concerned about anything else that's going on. Anyone else that is around us. Because the necessity of birthing something through us is absolute. Who will teach your children to call on the Lord if not you? Who will show them how to call on him and travail through hard things and through distraction to receive direction and hope from the Lord if not you? You can't tell me that you've done everything that you are able to do in that situation if you have not yet travailed in it. You can't tell me that you don't have the faith or you are not able to do whatever is needed to be done if you have not travailed for the faith or the ability to do it. Whatever it is that you are asking for, whatever it is that is on your heart, whatever it is that you have a need for, travail for it. Make travail a part of your daily life. Make travail a place and a, pl- a place that when you are in your home, there is a travail that goes forth from your home, that goes far past the eye, what the eyes can see. Whatever and whoever is lost, travail for them. Whatever is broken, whatever is wounded, whatever is discouraged or worn down, we've got to travail for it. We've got to have a desperation along with a missional mindset about it. It's not just that we travail when we are broken and we are crying. We are travailing when there is something that has to be done. And we know in our spirits, we know in our words that it has to be done. When God speaks that this region is going to be reached, we have to be able to travail for that. We have to be able to travail that into existence. We have to be able to travail that the spiritual gifts would be expressed constantly, consistently, and to reach every need, to reach every person. We've got to have desperation along with the mission mindset for things to be completed in our walk with God. Our travail has to be consistent. When I pray before God, when I make a petition to him, it's got to happen. Otherwise, I'm not going to pray for it. When we are praying to God about something, we have to have an expectancy, a belief that he will come through. It's a need that has to be met, and I trust my father. I trust that He, what he's brought me through. I trust where he is putting me. I trust everything that he has done because he has been faithful, and he loves me. I believe, therefore, I pursue. I believe, therefore, I proclaim, and I partition. And we've got to get back to the place of travailing as a child. Our position spiritually has to be as of a child, that we are calling out to God. We get to a place where we are getting older and we mature and we, sometimes we lose that position of travailing as a child before our Father. If we want to see miracles and mighty things, it, it has to be birthed in us. It has to be birthed through you. Don't just pray that the miraculous happens in this place or that place. Let the miraculous be done in you. Let the miraculous be done in your home. Let the miraculous come through your hands and your mouth through travail. Travail that into your spirit. If his words promise it, I believe it and I want it. If the Lord said that he would give us the land, I believe it, I want it. Therefore, I will pursue it. If the Lord promised us the region and to do incredible things, I want it, I believe it, I pursue it. If God says, I'm going to reach every soul, I want it, I believe it, I'm going to pursue it, I'm going to travail for it. If God said that he's going to reach my lost family, I want it, I believe it, and I'm going to travail for it because it must happen. It must happen. It is not acceptable for souls to not be travailed for. It is not acceptable for my lost family to be lost without me travailing for them. It is not acceptable for my coworkers not to hear about the Lord and not have me travail for them. 
A child of God has the responsibility to travail to him. Do not accept a way of life that is less than what you are privileged to live in. Do not accept a place that is living under the benefits, under the promises that the Lord has given. We have the privilege to call out to God. We have the privilege to plead on someone else's behalf and believe that God will move. The fire of travail, that's something that will bring you into a place of accountability for whatever you travail for. God will will speak to you in different ways when you travail for what those needs are. When you are wanting to go to a certain place in God and you are travailing for that place, God will give you direction. God will speak to you about things. God will move in things and he will say, okay, I'll do this if you do this. If you move forward, if you continue to obey, if you continue to put that flesh on the altar through that travail, through obeying his word, through changing every time the word speaks, he will come through. If there are times that it's going to be uncomfortable, there's going to be times when it feels difficult and it's frustrating and it's physically taxing on your body. There will be times when you do not sleep very well. There will be times where you will be driven to a place of prayer when you are uncomfortable with doing it. And you do not want to do it in that time, but it has to be done. But you got to remember, we have to remember that this life is temporary. The stress, the difficulties of this life, they are temporary. They're not going to last. When we are travailing through through God and through the Holy Ghost, that time of stress and physical toil, that physical labor we're doing, it's temporary. It will not last. The pain that you face right now, it will not last. But heaven, that's everlasting. Peace and joy in the Lord, it's everlasting. The life is trying and difficult, but it will be worth it all. It will be worth every prayer. It will be worth every tear. It will be worth every heart-wrenching moment that we go to God and we say, God, I need you to move. God, I, I need an answer for this. God, I need direction for this. God, I need hope right now. I need peace right now. My family needs to be healed right now. My marriage needs to be healed right now. My family needs to hear about you right now. There is a broken heart that needs to hear you right now. So who will travail today? Are our hearts willing to be moved at any moment and go into a place of travail? Travail. We have to get comfortable with travail. We have to get familiar with travail. And it has to be something that we pursue and run after. When we are praying and we are, we are praying for needs and, and praying for services and praying for the different things that we pray for, we have to be able to get to a place where our heart cries out for God. And we won't stop praying until we get to that place where God gives us that release. And many times there, there are people, when they leave a prayer meeting, they leave a service, they leave their time of prayer at home, and they wonder, God, I, you know, I felt something. I felt the Holy Ghost move, and I, I felt your touch. But they feel like something was left on the table. They feel like something was left undone, and they're wondering, God, what, what are you doing? I, I, I needed an answer. I needed something. And, and they walk away from that place, and they wonder, okay, I prayed, I took time, but I didn't get what I needed. That's when you need to go to travail. That's when you need to go to travail when you are seeing things in your life that have to be changed. And they're not being changed through normal means. We have to get familiar with travail. Because there is such a compassion and a love of God that comes through a place of travail. If we could stand. We are child, children of God. And when we have needs, we can go to our Father and we can call out to Him. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, God doesn't get tired of hearing us pray. God does not get tired of hearing us ask Him, God, help me. God does not get tired when we cry out for the same need 10 times in a row for 10 days straight. He never gets tired of you coming to God and you praying for your lost family. It doesn't matter how many prayers you give up to God. God will never get tired of that. God will never get tired of that. When you are looking for direction, when you are looking for an answer, God never tires of hearing the prayers and the cries of his children. Not one time. You don't have to worry about God getting tired of it. You don't have to worry about God. I I know I'll come to you so many times with this need, and I know you're sick and tired of hearing from me. No. 
God wants to respond to that. So we continue to give it again. We continue to give it again. We continue to go to God again and again and again. 